Two Chairs No Waiting, episode number 522, Mrs. Mendelbright. Two Chairs No Waiting is brought to you each week by the folks over at weaversdepartmentstore.com. Drop by over at Weavers and check out some of the great Mayberry things they've got there. It's getting close to Easter, so maybe you want to check out the messages from Mayberry. That's right, it's an Andy Griffith Show Bible study book, a new one at Weavers. You might want to check out. And if you don't have it, you need to get it quick, though this is the way back to Mayberry. Only a few copies of this one left, and we're to the original 2001 edition that's actually signed by the author. Head over to weaversdepartmentstore.com and check it out. Two Chairs No Waiting is brought to you each week by the fine folks at Weavers and listeners just like you. And executive producer of tonight's episode is Clanton Crumble. Clanton came to a uh, Two Chairs No Waiting meetup back in February, he and his father, Philip, and uh, was so glad to have him. And thank you for being a sponsor for the show. Folks, my name is Alan Newsom. I'm your host here on Two Chairs No Waiting, and I, like you, am just a big Mayberry fan. So that's what we spend time doing here uh, as part of this podcast is just enjoying each other's company and talking about the Andy Griffith Show. Uh, so if you haven't heard the other 521 episodes of this podcast, if you love the Andy Griffith Show, I know you'd love going back at least one or two of them must be okay. I don't know. <laughs> so go back and check them out. We just finished up, finished up the Bruce Bilson interviews from 2015. Great series of uh, podcasts. And uh, this one, uh, I don't know how tonight will be compared because, wow, Bruce, he provided so much great information uh, but this week, we're going to lead off with Randy Turner from This Week in Mayberry History because it's kind of what inspired the Mrs. Mendelbright title for our episode tonight. And I think you're going to enjoy it. So let's go and hear from Randy uh, and enjoy his information. Welcome to This Week in Mayberry History, a report by special correspondent Randy Turner of the Gomer and Cooper Pyle Comic Book Literary Guild of the Mayberry Historical Society. J. Pat O'Malley was born on March the 15th, 1904 in Lancashire, England, and began his career as a popular singer in the United Kingdom. After completing his studies in London, by the time he was 21, Pat was already singing and recording with orchestras, and in 1930 became the main vocalist with the orchestra led by Jack Hilton, who was known as the British King of Jazz and the Ambassador of British Dance Music. Pat also worked in British vaudeville at the time. Pat recorded more than 400 popular songs with the band, and in 1935 embarked on a solo career while still performing with Hilton. Later that same year, the band came to tour the United States, and Pat decided to stay when the tour was over. In 1940, Pat made his debut in a small role in the film Captain Caution. After two other small film roles, he got his first big break in the popular 1943 family film, Lassie Come Home. Starring a young Roddy McDowell and Elizabeth Taylor, the hit film told the original story of Lassie, set in Depression-era London, when the collie had to be sold by a family desperate for money. Lassie eventually escaped her new Scottish home, to reunite with her young Yorkshire master. For the film and thereafter, Pat changed his stage name to J. Pat O'Malley, as there was already another actor billed as simply Pat O'Malley. The year after the film was released, Pat made his Broadway debut in the play But Not Goodbye in April 1944, though the play lasted less than a month. Just two months later, though, Pat had a complete reversal of luck on the Great White Way when he was part of the original cast of Agatha Christie's Ten Little Indians. The play was a smash and ran for more than a year. Pat did his first of many voice acting jobs for the Disney studio when he played Cyril Proudbottom, first in The Wind in the Willows and then in The Adventures of Ichabod and Mr. Toad. Both shorts were released in 1949, though Pat would have recorded the role much earlier to allow time for the hand-drawn animation to be completed. Pat made his television debut in 1950 
in an episode of the live television drama Stage 13. He quickly became a sought-after guest star and did a great deal of early live performances in anthology shows and continued to stay busy in later anthology shows which began recording their episodes. In 1952, Pat appeared in two more Broadway plays before taking over the role of Inspector Hubbard in another hit play, the original stage version of Dial M for Murder. Pat appeared in dozens of TV series over his career, such as The Real McCoys, The Man from Uncle, Gunsmoke, Green Acres, I Dream of Jeannie, and Adam 12. He appeared in four episodes of The Twilight Zone, he played a number of recurring characters in series, such as Frontier Circus, My Favorite Martian, Wendy and Me, and Maud. He played Rob Petrie's father in two episodes of The Dick Van Dyke Show, and he co-starred with Shirley Booth in the short-lived 1973 series, A Touch of Grace. And of course, Pat appeared in The Andy Griffith Show. In the season four episode, Up in Barney's Room, Pat played the con man, Oscar Fields, who tried to swindle Mrs. Mendelbright out of her life's savings. Pat continued to provide voices for Disney animated projects throughout his career, such as in Mary Poppins and 101 Dalmatians. He gave voice to both Twiddle Dum and Twiddle Dee, and both the Carpenter and the Walrus in the 1951 Disney film, Alice in Wonderland. He also did live-action work for Disney, playing the recurring character Sergeant O'Reilly in the series The Swamp Fox, which aired as part of the parent series Walt Disney Presents. In the Spin and Marty series, which first aired as part of the Mickey Mouse Club, Pat played Perkins, Marty's butler, and the assistant cook for the Triple R Ranch. Pat's last role was a guest appearance in a 1982 episode of Taxi. Pat passed away in 1985, shortly before his 81st birthday. Well, that's it for this week. As always, thanks for listening, and remember to take Andy's advice and go out there and act like somebody. Well, wow, thank you, Randy, for that great information. If you want to make sure you don't miss any of the great stuff that Randy does on the Internet, and in other places, send him an email at turnersgrade at gmail.com, and he'll make sure you don't miss anything. So, wow, thank you, Randy, for that information about J. Pat O'Malley. I did not know his name. I didn't know anything about him. Uh, Mr. Fields, Mr. Fields, from, uh, from the uh, episode there with up in Barney's room, was, uh, wow, what, what a different character he was. But, uh, you know, to a large degree, we never saw him, at least not on the Andy Griffith Show, after that. You know, that was the only time we ever saw him. It wasn't a large degree. We never did. But what got me thought, uh, thinking on this was because of Randy's report, I started trying to think about Mrs. Mendelbright. Well, there was a lot of stuff I didn't know about her. So, y'all remember Mrs. Mendelbright? Uh, there she is. Uh, she was Barney's landlady. And so uh, hopefully you can remember that it was on uh, up in Barney's room was the name of the episode that uh, this was featured in. And uh, she, she, this was the 104th episode filmed and it was aired episode number 105 back in 1963. Okay. So it was written by Everett Greenbaum and, and Jim Fritzell. Now, you'll remember, this is when Barney was cooking up in his room and, you know, got in trouble for cooking up in his room, and Mrs. Middlebright was his landlady. Now, if you need information about that, you can head over to Mayberry.info and just search at the top up there for Up in Barney's Room, and it'll pop up, and you can go and read more about it. Anyway, so I started trying to find out about the lady herself. The lady who played uh, Mrs. Middlebright, her name is Enid or Enid Markey. That's her, that's her name. Now she, uh, this, so as I said, I started looking into her. I don't know how much, you know, but I didn't know much. Uh, she created the role. This is what I was amazed at. She created the role of Jane 
in the first Tarzan movie. <laughs> did you did you have any idea about that? I uh, did not. I had no idea that she had done something like that. So I even went out on the internet and found the actual Tarzan movie. So let's uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be playing that in the background here a little bit. Now, again, it's a silent movie, uh, but uh, she is in this movie with Tarzan. Now, she was Jane, the love interest, silent movie from 1918, 1918. So as that's playing a little bit, let me uh, tell you a little bit about her. Uh, Enid Markey, uh, is a, she was she was born. Uh, let's see. I, I don't have that in this information right here. Uh, let me. Oh, here it is. Uh, yeah, let me look real quick. She was born in February the twenty second, nineteen. I mean, eighteen ninety four. Eighteen ninety four. Wow. Uh, so here's a here's a. Uh, I guess a. A report they did when she passed away. She passed away on uh, at ninety one years old on November the sixteenth. 1981 she lived up in manhattan and her career spanned 60 years and as i said she was the very first tarzan uh, she was jane in the first tarzan movie the guy who played tarzan name was elmo lincoln was his name now these were all again silent movies and she appeared in several there uh, but she talks about uh, having been in several of these kind of movies uh, tarzan movies uh, type movies and she quoted said I was the curly haired clinging vine heroine she once said and just when the Indians were going to scout me or the villain was going to have his way up would gallop William S. Hart or Elmo Lincoln and the scene would dissolve and two hearts beating as one not too demanding on roles is what she said uh, the roles weren't demanding, is what she had said. And uh, she said, I left the pictures just after I made the first two Tarzan films. So there was two of them. And tried, uh, I was tired of making faces, and I really wanted to learn to act. So she moved to New York in around 1920. So that's when she moved. And uh, started getting work in in New York. And she was on, I mean, all kinds of different things there in new york she made her last broadway appearance in only in america and and then another one i guess these were at the same time the ballad of the sad cafe and what did we do wrong miss marker returned to hollywood in 1945 after a 25 year absence to work in films like snafu the naked city and the boston strangler on radio she performed a cbs serial uh, called the Women of Courage and uh, Grand Central Station. She did a lot of, uh, she did a good bit of uh, radio work. And on television, she was seen in things like Bringing Up Buddy, where she co starred with Frank Atler uh, as his doting aunt. Anyway, I don't know how much you guys are interested in these kind of things, but she was born in Dillon, Colorado. And when she was born, there were no birth records that were kept at that time. And Miss Markey said, uh, she said, I feel about my age so often, I don't quite know exactly how old I am, is what she said. <laughs> so she took dramatic chain training as the youngest, as a youngster, and at 15 went to Hollywood with her mother to make the first of her films. While in New York, she lived, uh, she lived there in New York. Uh, in 1942, she got married to a man named George Cobb. He was an executive at the American Can Company, and he passed away in 1942, and she never remarried. Wow. So anyway, I, I didn't know if you guys would be interested in that or not, but can you believe she was Jane in the Tarzan movies? So if you see the, uh, if you're watching the video version, I'm showing the Tarzan movie in the background here. Uh, I'm about to stop here, but uh, but Mrs. Mendelbright. Mrs. Mendelbright was Jane. And uh, there's all kinds of pictures I was able to go out and find of her as well. Now, some other things that I didn't talk about. Uh, the, oh, the Tarzan movie, by the way, the name of it was called Tarzan of the Apes. And and uh, she, so she was in that movie. 
Now, one of the other things I didn't mention is I was researching this. Not only was she Mrs. Mendelbright on the Andy Griffith show, but she played Gomer Pyle's uh, grandmother on the 18th episode in season two of Gomer Pyle. So she was Gomer's grandmother and she could fail, tell the future. And in that episode, she was, she was uh, telling Gomer's future and Sergeant Carter's future by just, uh, you know, one of the, one of the times she peeled an apple and threw it on the floor, the apple peel and told Gomer who he was going to marry, I believe. Anyway, so if you have Gomer Pyle, uh, on DVD or something, you might want to go and check that out. If you don't have it, you can get it at Weavers. <laughs> but it was a pretty funny episode. I watched it as I was getting ready for this and did some screen captures so that we could see Mrs. Mendelbright as Bar- as Gomer's grandmother. Uh, so she was a she was an accomplished actress and did tons and tons of movies. And uh, if you go and look at her IMDb. Uh, credits and scroll through them. She was in, she acted all the way up until 1968 in a movie called the Boston Strangler, but uh, she had tons of credits going back into the silent films back from uh, about 1951, all the way back to 19, uh, gosh, 14, 19. Actually the first one was in 1911 was her first credit. Wow. So anyway, she was a silent film star that I didn't know. Now, I did, uh, as I was looking into this, I kind of go and try to see if uh, Randy Turner had talked about uh, talked about her uh, because I knew I would not provide the kind of information that Randy uh, can provide because he's, you know, he's a better researcher than me. But I just I think it's interesting when we find out some of the things about these uh, actresses and actors from the Andy Griffith Show and just the things that they did in their previous career. So when you see Mrs. Mendelbright on the next time when you see her on the Andy Griffith Show, I want you to think, wow, she was Jane on the first Tarzan movie. <laughs> anyway, that's it. That is all I have for us tonight, guys. Uh, the last few weeks is. Uh, we have had so much information this week. I thought I'd give you a little bit of a break. So we're going to have a shorter episode and well, truthfully, I needed a little bit of a break. So I am going to start letting you out of here. I would love to hear from you. If you give me a call at 888-684-8415 and tell me you're thinking about Mrs. Mendelbright. By the way, we had a conversation before the podcast. Is it Miss Mendelbright or Mrs. Mendelbright? And we used the Andy Griffith Show book by Jim Clark and Ken Beck to determine for certain that she is Mrs. M-R-S, Mrs. Mandelbright. So let us know what you think about that. I'd love to hear from you. You can give me a call at 888-684-8415 or email me at floyd at imayberry.com. I'd love to hear from you. Tell me what you've been thinking about the podcast lately and what you love about the Andy Griffith Show. I'd love to hear it. Until next time, folks, have a great week. Good night.